Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. So today I'm actually doing a wedding q and I did actually film one of these pre-wedding. I don't actually think I ended up uploading it because there wasn't actually that much that I could say and that much advice that I could give having one, not even gone through the wedding, but also two, not giving away every single thing about my wedding before it's even happened. So, so we've been married about four or five months now. So I thought now is the time to sit down, do a Q&A. All is said and done. So I feel like I've got loads of advice to give, loads of things I can tell you about the wedding. I can share loads of photos. When we were planning our wedding, I found things like this really, really helpful because what I used to say when it comes to wedding planning is, I've never been married before how am I meant to know any of this and so obviously I did find as much information as possible helpful when it comes to planning a wedding going through with the day everything like that so I asked you guys on Instagram any questions that you wanted to ask me about the wedding I was like you can be as personal as you want and I can share some photos advice regrets things like that and I've got all your responses here screenshotted so I'm going to go through them all and hopefully give you some good advice and you can have some sneak peeks into my wedding pictures as well I've got a cup of tea this is actually my first cup of tea of the day and it's 11am guys 11am is my first cup of tea of the day I honestly don't even know how this happened so i'm gonna structure this video with kind of like planning then the actual wedding i'm gonna do all the planning questions first and then all the actual wedding questions i'm gonna add photos throughout when they're relevant to the questions so keep an eye out for those and yeah i hope you enjoy oh we do actually have a hendu question so i'm gonna do hendu first because that kind of is in the middle of wedding planning but i feel like hendu is a good a good thing to start off with so advice on how to plan and prep for abroad hendus so I was really late with mine to be honest I was like I didn't really know where to go like it was just nobody knew what everybody were doing like I just did not know as organized as I am in life I, with when it comes to holidays I'm just not kind of a prep in advance kind of gal when you're a bride you want to do all the things you want to do you want to have a good time you want to do all these amazing things you've got to think of other people's budget in mind as well and then if people don't want to come it's absolutely fine to them abroad Hindus are expensive they're gonna be it's a hen do you know what i mean and so i actually really wanted to go to barcelona on my hen do my wedding dress was made in barcelona so it was kind of like all tied into one i love barcelona anyway it's one of my favorite places and it's so good for a hen do loads of people have told me that barcelona is amazing for a hen do and we'd already been to ibiza the year before so i, was like, I don't want to go to ibiza and i've been to ibiza like Gosh, honestly, I do not even know how many times I've been to Ibiza, like maybe like 15 times. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I went to Barcelona and it was absolutely insane. It was like the quickest, like three, I think we went four days, three or four days. And it was so fast, but it was so good. Like it's all right booking a city centre hotel for Barcelona, but we wanted to go to a specific beach club that was like a bit further out and then there were a couple of other things that weren't in the city centre so we were more near like the beach part of Barcelona rather than like up La Rambla and like in the city centre we were like more towards the beach booked a beach club because I honestly love a beach club day it was honestly the best and funniest day like I spent ages on my hair and makeup in the morning like I waved all my hair and Mars the label fishtail swim on I felt min honestly guys the drinks were flowing at this point my sister she comes up to me in the pool and we're just like you know I've got my hair in like um I put my hair up in a clip and my sister comes up to me and obviously we'd had a few drinks at this point she grabs my head dunks me under the pool right I think my sister-in-law was sat like on the bed because our bed was next to the pool she was like oh my god I think she's gonna be fuming she spent ages on her hair and makeup and I just burst out laughing it was so funny then we were all just like dunking each other in honestly guys I don't know how we didn't get kicked out I genuinely do not know how we didn't get kicked out because we were being an absolute menace that day we were playing like drinking games and like guys I took my mum my grandma my auntie like everyone on this hand do like so good to be there like especially with my grandma and stuff like that but they absolutely loved it I feel like everybody loves a beach club like my my grandma said like that was the best day for her like the beach club and like if it's hot you need to book a beach club just any anything that's got good reviews just book a beach club because they're just absolutely insane make sure you've got one night where you've got a really nice dinner booked because the thing is you don't want to have a dinner booked for every night we didn't book a dinner for the night that we went to the beach club because you never know what time you're getting out of the beach club it could it could be early it could be late but you don't want to be clock watching thinking we've got to get back to the room to get ready to go out and that kind of thing so i would say the day that you have kind of like a chill day or just like around the pool or you've not really got much planned 
plan that night make sure you've got a really nice dinner plan so you've got something to look forward to i can't even explain to you how drunk we were but that night we didn't have a dinner book so we could just go back to the room i actually had a sleep for a bit i fell asleep in a sheet mask and then we went out for dinner a little bit later on so it was good that we didn't have anything planned because we weren't clock watching and like rushing back for it i wanted to do like the full experience and then after that we had a really nice dinner booked and that was kind of like our night out night so, so we went for dinner we had loads of drinks um the restaurant actually turned into a club later on so that was really fun and then we didn't get home until early hours of the morning so i feel like doing those two days is kind of like takes up two days obviously if you're going to do a boat day do a boat day your bridesmaids might step in and say we're going to plan a surprise for this day so don't book anything but i actually booked most of our stuff through a concierge so they were called vip at barcelona and they had really good like restaurant recommendations beach club recommendations they could get you in places and things like that so i booked most of our stuff through them me and my sister worked together and we did um like a mini beach bag for everyone coming and i put like um a hangover kit in there oh god what did we have we had like fans nail files like i did tea coffee hot chocolate um sweets i wish i'd have done like a tiktok or a video of like my, the beach bags that i did because they were so good and the beach bags were from etsy and they had like everybody's initials on them everybody absolutely loved them they were so good and also because they were like little mini beach bags they were so good to take around in the day as well so just have a look online and get a little bit of inspo if you want to give your bridesmaids like a little gift or something like that on the hen do i myself am a gifter like i love doing things like that for people and i love creating things and i love i just love giving people presents to be honest so i was really really excited to do that um but as in terms of like planning and prepping for a hen do just get everybody in a group chat make sure you've got a really nice dinner booked um make sure you're actually doing what you want to do because it's your hen do it's not everyone's hen do it's actually your hen do so I mean, you don't have to be a bride dealer about it, but just like, oh, one day I really want to go to a beach club. Would everybody be up for this? And already 15 minutes in and I'm on one question, so I actually need to pick up the pace. How to find the right venue? I'm struggling. Did you have a wedding planner? So no, we didn't have a wedding planner. We didn't have a wedding planner because I am, as I say, quite an organised person. We already kind of knew what we wanted anyway and had a vision of what was it was going to be like. Me and Ali were very much like on the same page of like how the wedding was going to be. Like, we're very similar in that way. So we didn't really need a wedding planner, but finding the right venue, I think you've got to think about what you want. So first of all, destination wedding or you're getting married at home. We originally wanted to get married abroad in either Ibiza or Italy, but we didn't know if people would be able to fly and things like that. So we just thought, right, scrap that. We'll get married at home and we'll have a little bit of a bigger wedding because we originally wanted a smaller wedding. Then you've got to think of like the religious aspect. Do you want to get married in a church or any other religious buildings that are really personal to you? Like what? what do you want your ceremony to be like you really need to think about that as well or do you want to have like a civil ceremony in like a stately home or something like that and then you need to find the actual venue so i originally saw one in harrogate which was um a really nice like hotel and we were sat down and we were talking about it and we was like yeah like we'll go and visit it but then i was thinking we all live all our family all our friends all live very close and like there's only a few people that would have to travel to us so why are we taking everybody up to Harrogate for a wedding for one day why not just have it closer to home where I live there's not many good venues around here like there really isn't and I did actually come across one one night and it was absolutely stunning like I fell in love with this venue and I was like oh I was like I bet it's ages away I bet it's like an hour away guys it was 15 minutes from my house 15 minutes if that from my house i was like shut up so i thought right we need to go and see it like we need to have a look around we had a look around this one day and we absolutely fell in love like i'm not even kidding it was like it was like i'd already been there like i just felt like this is the one but i definitely feel like you've got to look around a few venues we went to look around one that we thought we would like it was awful um the woman was like so do you want to book or not and we were like okay <laughs> like give us a minute but yeah you've just i feel like you've got to look around a good few book viewings just go don't feel pressured to book anything or anything like that just go and see as many as you can do you want to have somewhere away from where you live do you want it closer and just kind of like work with what you've got i am honestly so glad that we didn't choose that one in harrogate because it was just so good that it was close to home especially with me getting ready in the morning and stuff like i actually got ready at home um with the cats in this very makeup room actually as well i wanted to be in the makeup room with my cats 
I wanted to, I think I actually watched Vampire Diaries as well that the morning of the wedding. Now, when it comes to the running of your day, what do you want from that? Do you want to be closer to home? Do you want to be further away? Some people don't want to get married close to home. Some people want a destination wedding. So you've got to think about destination, the religious aspect, and how close to home you want to be before you start getting overwhelmed by venues, if that makes sense. Okay, this is quite a long question, so let me read it out. I'm starting my wedding planning this year and really want a wedding plan journal. Any recommendations? I always need to write things down. So, um, I had one from Blush and Gold. I will link it in the description. It was so good. It has like timelines of things that you need to do, things so, like things that you need to do 12 to 18 months before your wedding, things that you need to do six months before your wedding and all these little things to tick off. I used mine so, so, so much. It was battered by the end. I wish I had it to show you, but I've actually put it in a box with loads of wedding keepsakes just for the future, just so I can kind of look back on it. So I don't actually have it to hand. Also planning to marry in Wales, so can't plan till we go in the summer. Is it too early to ask my bridesmaids to be bridesmaids, if that makes sense? I would say if you are planning to get married in Wales and you're not going till the summer, do the things that you can do that regardless of the actual venue and things like that, that you can do. So you can ask your bridesmaids to be bridesmaids now, as long as you're dead solid on the bridesmaids that you want, all the things that you can do, do them. Even down to like your favours, you could have a look at a few favours or start to build like mood boards, Pinterest boards, things like that. Just start looking at loads of different things and it will give you sort of an idea of what you want so that when you do go to Wales, you can think, oh, that idea that I had in my head about this, that would look really good at this venue. You've already got kind of got an idea in your head of what you want. Like think about flowers. You don't necessarily have to book these things, but just kind of have a look. Just get a little bit of inspiration, I would say. Someone's put, where do you start <laughs> in terms of wedding planning? Start with the venue. Don't even pick a date, start with the venue because you can't book your flowers without your venue, you can't book a photographer without the venue, you can't book anything without a venue because they all need a date. So I would say start with the venue and then go from there. When should you send your save the dates and wedding invites out? I would send the save the dates out as soon as you know the date. As soon as you know that date and it's dead and set on, you paid the booking fee, whatever, get some save the dates sent out because it gives people way more time to book time off work if they need to, or book any holidays around it. It kind of gives you an idea of who can't come already if they've already got things booked. And then wedding invites, we were a little bit late sending out our wedding invites. Uh, we went back and forth with the supplier so much. Like that's the one thing that was a bit like stressful um, was that we approved a design, checked it all over, everything's perfect. But then when they actually got sent to us, there was always something wrong. There was always something spelt wrong, my name spelt wrong, our address on our little, um, because we had envelopes with our address on the envelopes so that people could send RSVPs back to us. Um, the postcode was wrong, even though I'd, when I'd approved it, it was right. Honestly, like there were so many things that just, we went, must have gone back and forth about five times and it ended up us being sending out our wedding invites a little bit late. So I would say send out your invites 10 months before, nine months before, something like that. As soon as you know your menu and things like that, then send them out. We didn't know our menu until the January, but we obviously needed to put our menu options on our RSVP so people could let us know what they want to eat so we couldn't send ours out till like February and then it got pushed back so it was like March so we were like six months before but to be fair it worked really well and it actually was fine so now's the fun part because we're going into the actual wedding questions tips on how to prepare for the actual wedding morning slash running of the day so make a list what time you need to be at the venue I would say you need to be in your dress and ready an hour before you get married because that hour goes so fast you're taking photos you're doing reveals to people your photographer wants you everybody kind of like wants a little bit of you during that hour so i would say definitely be 100 percent ready dress on veil on shoes on makeup done everything an hour before you are getting married hair and makeup will give you a time of how long each one of them will take so you kind of need to discuss with them how long is it going to take you to get to the venue getting ready at the venue the venue had like a bridal suite where we could all kind of get ready from 10 because we got married at half one so we had that from 10 o'clock but obviously i needed to be ready by half 12 two hours is not enough time for me to get ready <laughs> so um i actually did my makeup at home loads of the girls had their hair and makeup done at home so when we actually got to the bridal um room i hadn't had my hair done 
so I had my hair done in the bridal room and then I was literally whisked away upstairs into the honeymoon suite taking photos um putting my dress on on my own and things like that with my mum all the rest of the girls kind of got ready in the bridal suite which was really nice because I did a bridesmaid reveal I will say morning of the wedding make sure you have something to eat I actually had absolutely loads to eat the morning of the wedding I had two slices of toast in the morning or did I have Weetabix I can't remember I had one or the other um I wolfed that down about five o'clock in the morning when we went to the venue I had like a salmon sandwich I think there was actually a genuinely a photo of me grabbing a, ham a salmon sandwich um I was just eating I was just like fuel me up because the thing is right guys I didn't get married till half one our reception wasn't until half three so I wasn't going to be eating till half three in the afternoon so whenever there was food I was like give me it like consuming so much food plus as well you might be having a drink in the morning you want to line the stomach if you do drink so make sure you have something to eat because you don't want to be feeling faint you want to feel well you want to feel fueled up for the day you want to be ready so definitely get something to eat and also delegate tasks to your bridesmaids and your bride team as well so my sister was in charge of when i got to the top of the aisle my sister would grab my bouquet off me because obviously when you're exchanging rings you can't be faffing about with your bouquet so my sister grabbed my bouquet for me she was also the one to give it me back before I walked back down the aisle um she was also in charge of sorting out my dress my dress had a really really long train as well as my veil so my sister was kind of in charge of fluffing that up um in the day best friend she was kind of in charge of taking like behind the scenes photos just on my phone like just a little bit of content that I just had to look over the day after um and my sister-in-law she was in charge of she was the point of contact for the photographer so if he needed to know where we were because obviously I was one place we were all in different cars coming to the venue so she was the point of contact um for them and I would say make your partner do the same as well like if they're having bridesmaids groomsmen make sure they've kind of got roles to do and things like that just delegate to your bride team you know like that's what they're there for um and just make sure kind of everybody's got like a task to do because it takes the stress off you in the morning but just kind of write down everything that you want to do in the morning and just if you've got a list you can just tick off and everything's all all right do you pay for bridesmaid dresses and the hen party yourself so for the hen do everybody paid for themselves apart from I did everybody like um little goodie bags and things like that I paid for bridesmaids hair makeup and dresses just because I really wanted to I asked them to be my bridesmaid so I knew that I wanted to pay for them if that makes sense like I really wanted to um but then again if I was a bridesmaid at somebody else's wedding I would pay for my own dress I would pay for my own hair and I would pay for my own makeup if need be so so it's a tricky one I would speak to your bridesmaids and see how they feel and it's also like how much you have in the budget for that as well like I'd put that into our budget because I, that's something that I personally really wanted to do it's completely up to you I feel like it's so specific and like it depends how many bridesmaids you've got like I only had four bridesmaids so for me that was fine but imagine I know some people have like eight bridesmaids like that's a lot of money to put in your budget so it just depends actually where were your bridesmaid dresses from so our wedding was navy white and gold we always wanted navy white and gold I think at one point I did want black and white in the beginning but then it would mean that Ali would have to wear a tux and I know that Ali's a navy guy for those of you that don't know Ali used to own a bespoke suit shop before he started doing what he does now his eye for detail when it comes to suits is just absolutely phenomenal like to, to be fair like I had nothing to do with suits I had nothing to do with groomsmen suits nothing I left that all to Ali that's his area of expertise I was like do you know what you just go for it like whatever you want to do I knew that Ali really wanted navy so I was like okay let's do navy white and gold like that was no bother to me at all so I was looking for navy bridesmaid dresses everywhere and guys do you know what like bridesmaid dresses so many of them I just find uh so frumpy and just not flattering at all i think a lot of them look very prom like as well so i was really struggling to find ones that were really nice and i originally bought the molly may ones i'll put a picture here um because wow i saw molly may and i was like stunning they look amazing like they look so modern as it got closer to the wedding i was thinking like i always think about myself in these situations i was thinking there's a lot of food, there's a lot of drink, like, is everybody going to be comfortable in these dresses all night? Like, I would never want any of my bridesmaids to feel, like, uncomfortable. Do you know, like, after loads of food and drink, like, I just really wouldn't want that for anyone because I wouldn't want it for myself. So I was like, do you know what, I'm not doing it. I'm changing my mind. Don't want them anymore. Like, forget it. <laughs> I actually found some other ones and they were only from 
ASOS, I believe. So I will link them in the description box if they're still available. They do them in loads of different colours as well. I think there's like nude and things like that. Um, they weren't expensive at all. Like some of these bridesmaid dresses, right? They're like £200 each for bridesmaid dresses and they're awful. Like just so frumpy and like prom like and just not very nice whereas these ones were a bit more modern they were like one shoulder like super comfortable they looked so flattering on the girls and obviously i said to the girls like do you like these like do you want to try one on and let me know what you think everybody loved them it was a vibe how long in advance did you have your dress so we got married in the september the december before that so kind of like nine ten months before i went shopping for wedding dresses right guys it was the first dress i tried on so this dress was on my pinterest board basically there was a couple of dresses from this same brand and it's a spanish brand they're all made in barcelona so that was really important to me for those of you that don't know i do have a little bit of spanish heritage so i was like i really want a spanish made dress the brand of dresses i really wanted like i knew i was going to be a pronovia's bride when and i tried on this dress i'd never wanted a big dress did not want a big dress i wanted kind of like an off shoulder long sleeve hayley bieber style dress um but I thought, you know what, I'll try on this dress to rule it out, you know? I was like, I'll try it on because I need to try on a big dress. Guys, it was the first dress I tried on. She went, do you want to try the big one on first? I was like, yeah, do you know what, let's get it out of the way because I know I won't want it anyway. I put this dress on, I walked out, everyone went, oh my God. And I was like, I look unreal. I was like, I look amazing in this dress. So I was like, we're off to a good start. If I love the one that I thought I was going to hate, then we're off to a good start. Tried on loads of other ones guys horrendous the ones that are like um ones that are like strapless did not suit me at all some people look beautiful in them and they just did not suit me um i tried on like a long sleeve kind of like high neck one that just looked like i was wearing a curtain um there was one which was like plain and cap sleeve and backless and it was like slim fit and i really would have loved that if i'd have got married abroad but it wasn't because i already had my venue and my venue was kind of like a big I don't know what you would call it, maybe like a stately home. Um, it was huge with like huge grounds and I thought, I don't want a tiny little dress. I want to stand out in these like tall ceilings and things like that. So it was between this off shoulder one, which was like long sleeve and slim fit. Um, and I did like it, but I felt like my shape looked better in the big one. And I just felt better. And I knew that if I'd have got the long sleeve one, I would have regretted it. So I paid for my dress on that December. Obviously I had to be made in Spain and brought back into the UK. So I didn't actually pick up my dress till maybe June, July, I wanna say. And then I got it altered because it needs shortening a bit at the front. And then I think, so I think I only had it like a few months before, but I actually chose it like 10 months before. But I do think there's no harm in going and trying on. I really don't like, I just think, even if you're like two years away, just go and try on. Like you don't have to buy one straight away. I would say wait as long as possible, but obviously sometimes they do take six months to order in with most places. So I would say make sure you are kind of going early just so you can have a look around and you have got that time for it to be ordered in. But also don't buy one like three years in advance because you know, weight fluctuations, everything, like you just never know. Any advice on how to stay calm on the day of your wedding? I'm being told to take a shot. <laughs> so. Honestly, you can ask anyone from my bride squad, any of my suppliers, I was the calmest bride on the morning of the wedding. Now, I'm quite like an emotional person. Like, I cry at films. I'm a crier. Like, I do actually cry when small things happen to me. I am a really, really emotional person. I'm a Pisces, so it's just natural. It just, the tears come out. I thought I'd be really overwhelmed on the morning of the wedding. I thought I'd be not not nervous but just like overwhelmed and i thought i would cry down the aisle and all that sort of thing but do you know when it got to the morning of the wedding my sister stayed with me the night before i looked at my sister I was like as if i'm getting married today like that's mad in it and she was like yeah like as if you're actually getting married today i was like amazed i had loads of food i feel like food helps keeps the belly like do you know when you get like a nervous belly just have some food make sure you have like a favorite drink in the morning do you love your coffee do you love your tea I just had like three cups of tea that morning. I didn't have any Prosecco until I got to the venue at 10 o'clock. I actually had a bottle of Prosecco before I walked down the aisle. <laughs> but I'd had so much food that I it honestly was not even affecting me. And I was drinking it so slowly as well. I was so excited to see Ali that I was just like, oh, I just want to see him now. I just really want to see him now. Like... I just can't wait to get married to see him now. Like, I wasn't nervous and I wasn't thinking, oh my God, everybody's going to be looking at me and like, 
I was just so excited to see Ali. So I feel like that's what was going through my mind. Like, I just want to see him. Um, and I was just really relaxed and I had really relaxing suppliers. Like, when I got whisked away from the girls straight upstairs to the honeymoon suite to take some photos with my photographer, I'll put some bridal prep pictures here that Ashley took. In fact, I'll sit here so I can, future me can add some photos here. Um, when I got to go upstairs to the bridal suite, Ashley was like, you're so calm. He was like, I think you're probably the most calm bride ever. And I was like, I know. I was like, I'm just excited. I'm like, I'm just happy to be here. I've done all the planning for two years. Like, this is the most prepared day that has ever happened ever for me. So I know that everything's running smoothly. I know everything's where it needs to be. I was just constantly eating and like enjoying a glass of Prosecco. And like, I just felt so good. I felt so confident. I felt like I looked really nice. And I just feel like nothing happened that morning that kind of stressed me out. And oh, except I thought Simba had ran away. So I have two cats. And obviously because there was loads of people in and out of the house, I thought Simba had ran away. I could not find him. I was shaking the dreamies bag like, I could not find this cat for the life of me. Like I was literally, like I'd done my makeup and I was nearly in tears. My dad and my brother had turned up to take me to the venue. And he was like, stay calm, stay calm. He'll be fine. He's not escaped because I've got two house cats. And guys, I was literally nearly crying my eyes out because Simba, like he would not survive outside. Like he's not, he just doesn't like it. Like we've tried to take him outside in the garden and things like that on a leap. He doesn't like it. It really stresses him out. So I'm thinking Simba's outside. I'm like crying. Um. Anyway, he was tucked up in bed under the pillows, which he, he never goes there. But obviously he must've been really overwhelmed with the amount of people in the house. So he took himself off, all was good. That was the only stressful part of my day. Other than that, I was just like at the venue, I was like, yeah, cheers, like, love it. Like, whatever, you know, everything's good. I don't know, I think I was just so excited to see Ali that I was just so calm. And I think you've got to flip yourself in that mindset. Like, you've prepared for this day. If something's gonna go wrong, whatever. There's nothing you can do about it now. You're gonna see the love of your life at the end of the aisle. You'll be with them soon. Such a good time, you're gonna have such a good day and you just need to embrace it and also i thought i would cry down the aisle but i actually didn't it was like guys this is gonna sound so cheesy but when me and ali were saying our vows to each other and when it was the whole ceremony i felt like nobody was there i felt like it was genuinely just me and ali stood in this room with this woman i actually forgot that people were there like it's just so magical it's amazing. Favours, did you have them and what did you have if you did? I wanted something that everybody would kind of like use. I didn't want something that people would take home or like leave because people say don't get favours because everybody leaves them. So I was thinking, what can we do? And actually we had little bottles of limoncello and we put a little tag on them that said, take a shot, we tied the knot. Um, we did limoncello because Ali has spent a lot of time in Italy. Dad used to do properties in Italy and things like that. But also it is actually a tradition in my family that every Christmas or Easter dinner or any kind of special occasion, everybody has to do a limoncello shot. Like literally we will sit around on Christmas day after the Christmas dinner meal and we will all do a limoncello shot. Kind of like we're bringing both of our families into it. So that was really, really nice. And I just got them from Costco. And you know what? There was no favours left. So everybody either did the shot there and then or took them home. There was literally no favours left. And I actually kept a favour as well. I think I actually had an empty one. I think I took my empty one home in my bag um, with the thing tied on it. And I kept it in my wedding keepsake box as well. I would definitely recommend doing that by the way, having like a wedding keepsake box. What did you walk down the aisle to and what was your first dance song? So I walked down the aisle to She by Elvis Costello. Notting Hill is one of my favourite films of all time. So I always kind of knew that I wanted to walk down the aisle to that. Because um, that's one of my favourite films and I love that song so much. And it was sung by Brad, who was our musician for the morning and the ceremony and the drinks reception. Um, and he did a wonderful job. He played it on like a piano and it, oh, it was magical. But kind of like when you're walking down the aisle, you can't really hear it. Um, because you're kind of like overwhelmed, you're not really listening to the music. Our first dance song was Just The Way You Are by Barry White because me and Ali just listen to Barry White constantly in the car. Like whenever we're going somewhere, we're like, oh, we'll put Barry White on. Or if we're at home cooking, we always put Barry White on. Like we just love Barry White, to be honest. And we walked back down the aisle too, because obviously we walked up the aisle and then we had to walk back down together. I kind of, I, I really couldn't decide I really couldn't decide what to have and like we needed a happy song but I, 
guys i didn't want something kind of like cheesy but then ali actually <laughs> i actually let ali pick this one and do you know what he picked he picked um we don't have to take our clothes off by jermaine stewart <laughs> so that was funny and i think everybody laughed at that say your music is important but i think i was thinking too deep into it at one point and i was like let's just go for what we like just the way you are by barry white is really really nice lyrics um and whenever i listen to it now i think oh i can i, like, I can take myself back to that moment like just dancing with Ali and we were both very drunk at that point as well so did you get a videographer if so did you choose to have a full two hour video at all can't decide we didn't get one just because I am a photos kind of gal I love photos and I knew I could take myself back to that moment with photos and you know what loads of people took videos as well like Colette who did my hair she took all the videos of my bridesmaid reveals um she took videos of me like in my dress um and just like loads of different things and for me i just wanted those short little videos and there's loads of us doing our first dance as well and things like that which, where to start with venue styling and how to know how much to fill the space so we actually had a venue stylist who did all of ours it is a huge cost of the wedding but i honestly felt like i did not want to go in that morning and do it all myself and honestly bridget was amazing she came in and literally transformed it all she was so good at like knowing what to put in because she's a professional like she just knew what to do she'd worked with our venue previously loads hello guys this is future me editing this video and i've realized the bit where i explain about um styling the venue has cut out so basically what i mean is the professionals know best when it comes to venue styling so definitely go to a lot of showcases especially if your venue in particular has showcases Places. go and look how the professionals style it take ideas off them if you are having a venue stylist then great they can do it all for you but if you don't then make sure you go into showcases or going on pinterest and kind of seeing different areas of the venue and what you would like there and try and get some ideas from the professionals and check out instagrams as well to give you an idea too it was just absolutely amazing and then this is actually the last question do you have a favorite moment of the day my whole day was the favourite thing. Like, I just did not even have one favourite part of the day. There were so many, like, little favourite moments. Um, I really liked being with my mum on our own when she... Because my mum put me in my dress. That was really nice. Um, and I also did reveals to my dad, my grandparents and my bridesmaids. Those were really special moments. My dad, that was the only part of the day when I actually was, like, emotional, apart from Simba nearly running away. We kind of, like, locked eyes. And we were like, <laughs> stop crying. And I was like, because me and my dad love like Earth, Wind and Fire, Bee Gees, like we love any music like that. So I was like, dad, no. I was like, we can't cry. I was like, we need to start singing Earth, Wind and Fire. And he was like, yeah, like we need to start doing that. It's actually a moment in the afternoon between the drinks, between the food and the night do, where I was having some pictures, kind of like a golden hour with um. The bridesmaids and my sister was kind of sorting out my dress and we were a bit drunk at this point and we were like um she put my dress over her shoulder to like move it round so it wouldn't like scrape on the grass some funny photos of that here like me and my sister just being stupid and there's some night do photos as well of like me my sister my brother his girlfriend my sister-in-law sophie who's one of my bridesmaids and ali as well like us five so we're kind of like a little group so there's really nice moments like that where we're all like hugging and dancing one of my favorite moments actually is straight after we got married me and ali got kind of whisked into another room because you kind of get bombarded by guests and we wanted them all outside so we could do like a confetti throw and things like that um so me and ali got whisked away and there was someone waiting with a beer and a mimosa for me me and ali were just stood in this room on our own and we were just kind of suddenly like as if we're married like and I said to her, I was like, I don't know what we just said in there. Like, all our vows, like, it just kind of, like, went. And, like, it was like, you're there, but you're not there. It was really strange. I was like, I don't know what we just said to you. And he was like, no, I genuinely don't know what we said. And Ali went, should we take a selfie? And I was like, yeah, let's take a selfie. And then um, our photographer walks in. He was like, are you two actually taking a selfie? And we were like, yeah. And he was like, right, let me take a picture of you taking a selfie. So I'll put the pictures there. I was taking a selfie because they're some of my favourite photos as well. Yeah, guys, I think I'm going to stop talking now because I've literally talked all day. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope I've given you a little bit of advice or a little bit of help. I know I've been rambling. I know this is a very, very long video. So, and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.